as AC Fudd is back in the equation. UConn with 10 available players as Megan brought up. The Hoyas in the throw blocks. UConn in the home whites, and we're underway with quarterfinal Saturday. UConn also happy to see Dorka Juhas out there. She had missed their regular season final game with an ankle injury. Aliyah Edwards with the defense out of the gates. And they got cooking with defense. And yeah, this is a Georgetown team that is built upon pressure defense. We'll probably see some full court pressure from them. We'll see it in the half court. Ray Sam Bennett rejected by Juhas and Aliyah Edwards. to Aubrey Griffin. Rebound to the Hoyants. Here's Fauntleroy, the Big East freshman of the year, starting with a banked in shot. But they were able to force 23 UConn turnovers in each of those regular season meetings. Mika Mule looking for Dorka Juhas and a foul on Claude. Jimmy Howard, the head coach at Georgetown, was on the Staff of Natasha Dare before getting elevated to the lead job. And Kim, he's really been impressed with his backcourt's evolution as the year's gone on. Yeah, with Kelsey Ransom, Kennedy Fauntleroy. He called it almost a big sister, little sister <laughs> dynamic. Those two are electric to watch, especially on the defensive end, I think. With the mules off, there's Griffin with the offensive rebound. Dorka Juhas glides in. Give this big UConn team extra looks. Three is a little bit short for more. Edwards attacks. Great defense by Grace Ann Bennett. Fauntleroy stops and knocks it down. UConn beat Xavier Monday, but just 60 to 51. As Griffin is fouled attacking, challenging his entire team after just a single digit win over a Xavier team that did not record a Big East victory. What did you make of some of that commentary to close out the regular season? Well, I think that's the sign of a good coach. You, you challenge your players. He obviously knows that they've been through the gauntlet with the limited rotations. Today, obviously, he has more players back, but you just want to keep coaching. Great Sam Bennett. Now with 10 on the shot clock, Claude, who led Georgetown in scoring yesterday, off on her first attempt. Bennett cannot clean it up, but Ransom has it. Shot clock did not reset. It's down to one. Claude ran out of time. Claude's going to have to try to battle around that size. Juhas back for the Husky. She missed Monday's game against Xavier. Do you know Ariema said it, Kim? What we end up doing in March depends on the production of Edwards and Juhans. Seneschal, too. And yeah, that was interesting to hear because a lot of times in March success, you think, oh, you need a great point guard. Pick and roll to Bennett. Just didn't work out for the Hoyas. But with Aubrey Griffin, a six-footer. Lopez Seneschal, a six-footer. And they are just so long and making passes difficult right now for the Hoyas. Connecticut allowing just 59 points per game. Seneschal. On the drive, Lou Lopez Seneschal has been a godsend for this team. Yeah, and just fundamental there, coming off of a ball screen at the top, turning the corner quickly, finding the gap, help not sliding in. Great read from Lopez Seneschal. The reason why she's been a godsend, Gina Oriama told us, is if we didn't have her, we would not have been able to win the Big East regular season championship as Bennett connects. It's a two. Yeah, Lopez Seneschal had come over from Fairfield where she was the match player of the year. Nika Mule with a nasty crossover, and she's fouled. Taking us to our first timeout. The emotion of that moment, Kim Adams, a roller coaster ride of a season, and you know it having played. Always fun to look back at those photos of mom. She credits her so much with the development she had in her own game. Seven on the shot clock. Ransom off to Moore. Moore with three. The Huskies 
Led by Nika Mule with defense. Now Mule off to Seneschal. Back door to Edwards, who's fouled. Lopez Seneschal running the lane, and then the trailer coming in. That is a, a full team fast break there. Everybody getting involved. Lee Edwards, unanimous all Big East first team. That wasn't a surprise. How about the fact, though, she was named Big East most improved player? Now more. And Mule skying for the board. Here's Fudd in her return for the Huskies. Two charm from Edwards. Fudd with the offensive rebound. Downstairs to Juhas, who took the contact, finished in the foul. Getting position on the post-ups. Being aggressive. Look, the Juhas has come to play after missing that finale of the regular season with an ankle injury. Take a look at Georgetown. Right now in a drought, anything you notice they can do differently. Well, what's tough about this matchup is UConn's so big inside, so things are clogged. You're going to have to get production from the outside, but Georgetown shoots just 28% from three. Matt snaps the drought. You can get out and run in transition where they're so effective, but the half court is going to be a challenge against this big and long UConn defense. Foul on Kelsey Ransom. Georgetown in the penalty. It's Ransom second. And now she's back for the first time since mid-January, but it certainly has to limit her mobility. Parents watching. AZ has talked openly about how vital, how instrumental they have been throughout all of the processes of going through injuries, going through setbacks. They've been there every step of the way, lifting her confidence level. Here's Ransom, their leading scorer. And Edwards is fouled from behind by Scott, so she'll head to the line. And those two are such a big part of what the Hoyas do defensively. Kelsey Ransom, when it comes to defending the opponent's best guard, Brianna Scott, adding the size that they desperately need. You know, Ariemma was also reflecting on this team's journey, Kim, and said, in a lot of ways, Edwards is a bit of a reflection on the court of how it's gone. And in November, December, January, she was dominating. They've got to get her back to that in March. And he did say that about Dorka as well. And I, th I think we have to give these women some grace because of the heavy minutes they've had to play. They've been tired. But he doesn't want to use anything as an excuse. But having more depth now should take a little bit of a load off. The Husky standard. Six on the shot clock. Here's for Georgetown. Rivera. Edwards with physicality. And a jump ball. It's with UConn with 7.7 .7 seconds. So aggressive and crashing the boards, averaging about nine rebounds a game this season. Seven, here's Mule to five. Five with two. Easy five. And Juhas, not enough time. That does it for the opening quarter. More disruptive and get out and play in transition. Grace Ann Bennett, known as the heart and soul of this Georgetown team, won the Big East Sportsmanship Award. Rivera off on the three. We have yet to see a made triple. You have to get some more exchanges, some cutting and screening to find some openings in the middle of this defense. The one positive for the Hoyas, 10 offensive rebounds. Bob Malloy, just off. That angle. Coach Howard certainly believed it was, but kind of another forced deep three there, 0 of 11 now for the Hoyles. There's Mule, setting a single season record for assists for passes like that. It didn't go for Griffin. Edwards is there. Yeah, that was just a beautiful read from Nico Mule. Didn't get the initial shot. And it's rolling. Scott cannot connect. UConn has held Georgetown to four for 27. New Haas. Everything she does defensively in the assist column, her leadership has been a big reason why this team has stayed afloat. Yeah, and you've needed leadership this season when 
these women have really been beaten down in terms of the minutes they've had to play. It, there have been some tough stretches, and you need players to help you through. Dorka Juhas again getting it done on the offensive glass. Juhas and Edwards have combined for 12 of the Huskies' 21. Fauleroy can't fit it past Griffin. And Juhas is held by Bennett. Incredible. I mean, those are some of the all-time greats in the college game, in the WNBA. Nika Mule has also set the single game record this season with a 15 assist game, beating her buddy Paige Beckers. There's Lou Lopez Seneschal. Scott thought about it. This time, Cates took the contact and will shoot two at the line. Brianna Scott at the line. Played her first game since February the 15th yesterday when she banged heads against Butler. Yeah, Christy Winter Scott, one of the best in the business, one of the best moms out at the Big Ten tournament right now, always supporting. Brianna was huge in the win yesterday off the bench, 11 points and six rebounds in just 15 minutes. Such a fun time of year. Loaded Big Ten. Catch coverage of that on BTN. Bud in and out. He's waiting for that one to yeah. It looks good off the hand. So he's just waiting for it to fall. He has not seen a made three. Hanson cannot hit. A lid on the bucket. 0 for 20 combined from three-point range. Into Edwards from Seneschal. You don't need threes when Aliyah Edwards can get a deep post-up position like that, just completely establishing herself. And Dorky Juhas have really commanded that. They've combined for 14 points. And part of that is missing Paige Beckers for the full season, missing AZ Fudd. And he said when the ball was going in, we do everything else better. Big East Tournament quarterfinals. First of four games today. This one on FS1. Our coverage shifts to FS2 for St. John's and Marquette at 2.30. Aubrey Griffin, that one's just spinning out. Interestingly enough, in this Big East tournament, the two teams that beat UConn in conference play are on their side of the bracket in the 4-5 game. Sorry, I got distracted by a UConn fan with sunglasses on and the sleeveless jersey and long hair in the crowd. <laughs> Kim, thank you for being so honest with all of us. Ransom shorts. Gino's honest with us. I have to keep it honest that the UConn fans are in full force here at Mohegan this afternoon. Griffin gliding. And that's what Gino talked about. More. What? These two teams have taken a combined 22 threes, and we have not had a make. Time for you to get, go out there, Fanta, and show them how it's done. I know you've got the forum online. Lou Lopez Seneschal, she's got that for him. Some sort of rhythm to taking the locker room with them. Ransom supplies it. And they finally get that mid-range area to go. I think that's somewhere where they're going to have to attack and thrive because they're not a great three-point shooting team and they're not big enough to go and battle inside with the UConn Bigs. Back door for AZ Fund. Welcome back. Her first main field goal. In her first game back in 15 contests, now another giveaway by Georgetown. That's seven. Five to Seneschal. Here's Ransom, the junior. Off to Moore. Georgetown loved the way his team defended yesterday. But said even after the Butler game, offensively, we got to be better here today. Well, you're meeting a brick wall. It is UConn. Juhas with the offensive rebound. And we got a whistle and a foul. Easily waltz into 
a couple of offensive boards in this game. Elite eight against NC State last year. You called that game for radio, and she goes out with an injury. And she knew a little bit before the injury then she wanted to be back here for this journey. Now she wants to go further than that this month. Georgetown with 10 seconds, and we get a foul on Connecticut. Now they're in the penalty. Clock in the game clock waning down, and now you send them to the free throw line. Well, we know it's me. <laughs> UConn has it with seven seconds. Edwards to Bencourt, now with three. Bencourt ahead to five to beat the buzzer. Has come out, and they are just being so physical. We want to look a little bit more so inside in the second. And guys, I do also have an injury update for you. We should not expect to see Caroline Ducharme returning. She will not return the rest of the game. Thank you, Megan. First thing you said to us was this is such an exciting day. For the first time since November, we have our full roster available. And we just, we feel for this team. We feel for Caroline. We hope to see her back out there. But at least today, they do have reinforcements. And Megan just reported they want to dump it inside. A good opening possession for the Hoyas out of the locker room. And the bucket by Kelsey Ransom, their leading scorer, the junior. Lou Lopez, Seneschal with 11 in the first half. And yet again, Aaliyah Edwards' effort. Yeah, and a different look here defensively. Georgetown coming out in zone, but when you're in a zone, you have to locate players to box out. You hot squads right through it. All five of her rebounds today, John, have come on the offensive end. She has not been able to be stopped in that area of the game. Ransom is fouled. She'll head to the line. He leads them in scoring, assists, rebounds, and steals. And you can tell she's putting a little pressure on herself. Jimmy Howard talked to us on Thursday. Said we're able to get her from New Jersey. She plays with that kind of swagger. Ran track in high school. And when they get her out on the open floor, that's Georgetown basketball. Yeah, and that's what I think they're lacking in this game. Her and Kennedy Fauntleroy, just two dynamic players. They haven't really been able to get going in the fast break. Off the turnover. Moore, she's fouled. He has somebody to go to, or even if players just need a breather, something that the starters have not had. A different look again to start this half for Georgetown. A bit of a 3-2 zone. <laughs> when you play zone, you're you're asking the opponent to knock down from the outside. And Dorka Yuhas says, all right, I'll take you up on that. Just the second three in this game. It was a, a tough start shooting-wise. Here's Ransom with the answer. Hello, Kelsey Ransom. Edwards from the elbow. UConn has sliced right through the Georgetown zone. Ransom again. Another battle for the board, and Edwards was fouled from behind by Claude, who has been scoreless today after her best performance as a Georgetown Hoya yesterday. Morehead State transfer with 17 points in that win over Butler. Hops to Edwards. How about the catch and the finish? They've attacked every gap in this zone. It was the free throw line area. Now attacking the back side of the zone. Aaliyah Edwards getting the seal, but not an easy catch. 12th double double of the year. And now Griffin flying in with some defense. And John, we talked about her being the most improved player this season. You mentioned that's her 12th double double. In her first two seasons, she only had three total. She's got 12 in this junior year. And all three came as a freshman. Here's Bud. Edwards, Aaliyah Edwards, initiates beast mode. Fauntleroy finding Claude. Claude's been quiet today, and she's fouled by Hughes. 
She was really the star, Ken, that got Georgetown to turn around the first quarter deficit. Hoyas were down 17 to 10 after one yesterday to Butler. And then they just took over outscoring the Bulldogs 16 to 5 in the second because Claude got hot. Yeah, I mean, they relied on their defense throughout, but she was the constant for them offensively when they couldn't find much. And it was a season high 17 for her, but she hasn't been able to find that same success today. AC Fudd. The best part of that for me, John, was that she didn't even react. She just pointed to her teammate and said, nice pass. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like she hadn't missed a beat. I didn't just welcome myself back. I'm just going to applaud the pass, the assist there. She's got that demeanor about her, Kim. Edwards swishes it home. She's really been something special. And I know Gino is hard on her and, and talking about the inconsistency of February. She looks in prime form today. Edwards with 15 and 11. Three Huskies in double figures. And here's Claude, still without a made field goal. UConn, much more like it offensively, 8 for 15 this quarter. Griffin gets her own miss. UConn with 13 offensive rebounds. And here's Mule. 10 on the shot clock. Oh, this time she finishes. Ooh, pretty. That's Croatian smooth right there. Yeah. Little little sauce on it. She just plays the game with that swagger. Fauntleroy. Here comes Fudd. The Huskies are now putting it all together in this third quarter. AZ Fudd. Welcome back. Is to have another threat on the perimeter to kick out to it. What were we talking about earlier, Kim? The defense, the rebounding have been there, but Gino Ariana said it gets harder when you're not scoring. Aliyah Edwards is scoring 17 points. And it makes things easier for everybody. Gino talked to us about this as well. When you have AZ Fudd and Lou Lopez Seneschal on the perimeter, you can't double team Aliyah Edwards and Dorka Yuhas like you would if they weren't on the floor. It has just been such a Challenging road for Duchamp. Jumbotron here in Mohegan has our broadcast up, so that's what led the fans to giving her a round of applause. How aware are you, Cut fans? They just saw Duchamp's face and they gave her a round of applause. Yeah, it's just tough to see. She's battled through so much. Having played their last eight games, decided by 10 or less. What a dish from Mule! Ahead to Griffin. It's a cheat code. Like a wide receiver, beats every defender down the floor, gets that hand up, and she has a tremendous quarterback in Nika Mule who always has her eyes up. And those two together, very dangerous. Yes, they are. More can hit. And here comes Mule again, just looking and surveying. Surveying, yep. He can score it too, and will go in the line. Use her speed and explosiveness to get by. We were talking earlier about the challenges and FUD alleviating things. Gino Oriema and his staff were talking earlier this week, and they just said, can we play one of our UConn patented games? No run. Fauntleroy to Rivera. Rivera from the corner. Best possession of the day from the Georgetown offense. Ball movement inside out, extra passes, open looks. And they get it to drop for the second time from deep this afternoon. Seven seconds for Nika Mule. Nika Mule with three. Mule off to Juhas. Juhas has to heave. And that does it for the third quarter. I mean, he is straight out of Southern California right now. That man has one thing in mind. Wait, he has shorts on. He has shorts on, I can see. Yeah, he's got one thing in mind, Kim. Finish out this game, head out these doors, and throw 500 on black. <laughs> yeah.
and he's winning, Kim. He is not leaving the table until he has won. That man is our fan of the game. The size of them, Dorka can give them a little bit more of an outside presence. Scott gave it some thought with seven on the shot clock, and she's fine. Yeah, I think there's still a lot of untapped potential with Brianna Scott, just a sophomore. Really their sixth starter, James Howard, has called her at times, and she's been really aggressive offensively as well in the two games she's been on the floor of this tournament. There's a lot to potentially look forward to for Jimmy Howard. Yeah, there's some nice pieces in place. Even Ariel Jenkins there guarding the ball. We saw a couple of blocks from her. She brings 6'3 size as well. And they're, they're continuing to play hard. And that's what you love, despite the lopsided score. Ransom sets the tone. She's the fire of this team, Kelsey Ransom. Things have come together, playing their best basketball. So this this tournament, more than others in the past, feels pretty wide open that there are a couple different teams who could walk out with the hardware. And a legal screen now set by Patterson. They have played the toughest schedule of anybody in the nation. And they, they certainly have dropped down a little bit. They have been projected on the one line before some of these conference losses. But they'll still certainly be in that top 16, maybe with a chance to move up back to the two line with a strong performance here. Ott with the steal and the score. Yes, Ben Ott. Just impressed with how this team is continuing to fight. Her fourth block of the game. She's posted 17 and 12. And Gino Oriemo, when we said, what does she mean to the postseason? He said, a ton. Into Edwards. She's been an unstoppable force today. She's played with that mentality this afternoon. 19 and 12, four rejections. Now six on the shot clock. It's Moore who hits. We've got this duo of Ali Edwards and Dorothy Uhas. They all actually have become best of friends in the process. And Seneschal hits it home. Can't forget about the guards, though. As Moore loses it. Always fascinating to see the arch of a tournament as Ben Court cannot hit. And now a blocking foul. But Marquette and St. John's have already shown that they can beat this team. An ovation for Ali Edwards. 19 points, 13 rebounds, 4 blocks. Well deserved ovation and cheer. That young lady left everything on the floor today. Now the steal by Griffin. To shed some historical perspective on what you just said, that UConn will have a tougher time with either Marquette or St. John's. Nika Mule puts the punctuation point on this one. As you noted, Coach, you've got your own brand of wine. He said yes, and it's been more than a glass of that throughout this journey. Little Red doesn't hurt. I still have to try that Oriama brand wine. Maybe I can get an NIL deal for that. <laughs> Look at you with 20 seconds left. Making the most of the opportunity, Kim Adams. I'm a beige. <laughs> AZ Fudd returned. Aliyah Edwards and Dorka Yuha shine. An ovation. That's more like it for Connecticut. The Huskies are heading to the Big East semis.